you know, they say that money is actually the number one reason for divorce. Right. So how do you, how do, you do that when there's two people and there's maybe conflicting values? And that's such a good question, and, and, and it's so sad because, again, it's not the, the Jewish paradigm because in Judaism, money is, um, not money, marriage is so central. Marriage is the epicenter of everything that happens in life, and peace at home it really is the vessel to bring the blessing of, of wealth and abundance into the home. So when you have two individuals that now merge into a partnership forever and a commitment to build a life together, one of the conversations that need to be happening before they even make that decision and throughout their marriage is what are our values and what is our mission as a family? What does God want from us? What are the values that we stand for and how is our money going to be financing those values? Which is why I always tell couples, sit together regularly and talk about these things as you're planning your finances. Make sure that you're connecting it to what the values of this family are. What if they're different? What if I want more guests, you know, and he wants to spend it differently? Right. You know, how do which, you... Which often happens. Right. Right. right? So, we have so different then... interests, right? So we go back to, again, marriage is so central. So when we're having this healthy, positive, constructive, and consistent communication about financial matters, we can also learn to understand each other, empathize with each other, and respect each other and what is important to you as long as it's a value within the parameters of what a Jew is supposed to be involved with, okay, within the parameters of Torah. What's important to you, it's, it, it becomes naturally important to me. And there's a give and take wow. in a marriage, right, wow. that requires communication and requires empathy. So would you advise couples to go on, like, these dates to talk about it? Like, Yes, absolutely. So how would you structure such a talk? Absolutely. How would you structure so a money date? So first of all, I think money days should be regularly scheduled at least once a month. And I think it's a process of getting to know your spouse. So I always say to people, don't think you're starting your first money dates ever talking about the numbers. It's never just about the numbers. We first have to take the time to understand what are our earliest memories and experiences about money. Um, what, did, what kind of home did we grow up in? How is money taught and perceived at home, right? That, that shapes a lot of where we're coming from. And more importantly, in those conversations, we need to talk about the values piece because we can have our own money story, but as we get married, we wanna create our own unique distinct story as a couple. And so that demands that we really openly talk about what are our values, what do we wanna build as a family, and how, how do we want the money to, to fund that, to finance that. So that's a huge piece of the process of the money date, as I like to call it. And of course, as you go along with your life and have these regularly, this is the space to exclusively talk about financial things. So that means that we're not in the middle of the week doing um, taking care of our jobs or our children or whatever it might be and randomly having a conversation about... Do you think we should spend the money right, on the that's stuff? not the <laughs> setting, right? We schedule these and we have an agenda and we make them pleasant. By the way, it doesn't have to be this stiff, tense thing. Like we can bring chocolate and we can bring tea or we can go for a walk, right? We have to also personalize it and make it individualized as a couple. It should be a positive experience because again, money is should not be an emotionally charged thing. And for so many it is. And really what you're saying is that your values should translate into your bake statement. Yes, absolutely. Financial statements are value statements. If I it, looked at like your banking statement, totally would at it. I be able to say what your values are? What are the values? Wow, what are you spending right? on? Right. What's How are you allocating spend? your money? So again, if charity is a value, right? So where is an account that shows that you're giving towards those causes that exhibit that? If Jewish education is a value, it needs to show. If marriage is a value, those times that you spend out as a couple should be reflected there, right? There's so much that needs to be reflected there. I'm wondering, you know, as a parent or as an educator, or even as an educator of society at large, how can we, in a practical way, teach and educate this positive side to money? So I think the first key there is to model, 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 right? Like you, our children and the world around us, right? Our friends, our circle of influence, but primarily our children, because they're the closest to us, need to see that we practice what we preach, mm -hmm. right? So they need to see that we 
have open conversations about money with our husbands, that we have scheduled times where we discuss these things, that when they come to us with an idea of something that we should spend money on, we can say, I'm going to have a discussion about this with your father or with you know your mother at the time that we talk about money. They should also see that we tithe, that we give, allocate that 10% to, towards the causes that are meaningful to us. And they should know what those causes are. We have to make it a non-negotiable at home, like a natural thing. Like when kids get money, which they should get, right? We, we should, that, that, would, that would be a very practical tip. Allow your kids to handle their own money. Allow them to have the experience of making financial decisions early on in their lives and have those conversations where you're asking questions and you're kind of training the thought process and the decision-making process in the way that this family values it. So again, tithing, right? And then, okay, so what are you spending on it? What is it for? Why, right? And don't be afraid to say no to your kids. I think that's a big one nowadays. And people get scared, well, maybe they're going to feel constricted or restricted. Well, there's ways of communicating that this family has certain priorities, mm. right? And we make certain financial decisions based on our values and our goals. And some things are not priority right now. They, that doesn't mean no. Sometimes it's actually, that's a great idea. But right now, we are investing in your sister's wedding and we're planning for that. And we're also planning for your camp, right? Coming up this summer. So that is something that we're gonna discuss for a little bit later in the future. Or perhaps we can also guide them through, I'll meet you halfway there and let's sit together and plan what is the cost of this thing that you want. And perhaps I can meet you halfway there. You can pay for some of it. I can pay for some of it. So we can't shy away from these conversations. It like totally removes the taboo. No taboo. No taboo. No this is this is like on the table. Because as Jewish people, money is not taboo, right? It should never be taboo. Again, what's taboo about a resource that God gave you? Like, there's nothing taboo. This is something that we all have to utilize in a positive way. So we need to talk about it with absolutely no shame. What's shame in the fact that God gave us? Um, our character traits. Like, there's no shame in the fact that God gave us gave us our, our wisdom, our smarts, whatever, our talents, right? Our beautiful singing voice or our piano talent, whatever it might be, right? There's nothing taboo. So God gave you another resource. It's called money. There's no taboo in this. It's On the amazing. contrary, it's amazing. It should be a conversation. It should always be a beautiful conversation. And you're also teaching children not just to get, but also to receive. Yes. You know, so if they're getting money from their grandma or anybody, right away you flip it and say, you just got $20, who are you giving $2 right, to? Right, right. And it so becomes like such a, a natural habit. If you start this early on, again, because we, our responsibility as parents is to train the adults, right? And so from a very early age, they're just understanding that money is a natural part of the world. It's something natural, and this is how I behave with money. Okay, thank you so much for joining us here today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, then please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more great Jewish content.